Welcome to Quarter Century of Warcraft Audio. Howdy, BlizzCon. Yeah. All right. So how about that Shadowlands cinematic? No. Yeah. Oh. All right, so I know there are some of them around in earshot, so let's make a little noise for our Blizzard animation group, our cinematic sound, and everybody in Soaring Franchise Development to help bring all of those awesome trailers. Yeah. All right. We are super excited, geeked out about the content, this next chapter, the Shadowlands. The opportunity for sound to help tell the story that we want to bring to, uh, to this expansion is more than we've ever really seen before. If you were here last year, we talked about the immersive soundscape in Drustvar, which was one zone in Battle for Azeroth. Well, we've been building that these ideas, technology that's helped made for more dynamic experiences, with uh, also supporting a more narrative flow. All of these ideas we've been evolving, and you can see some of this in the upcoming content patch, Visions of Nzoth. So going from that into the expansion, we're excited to even do more with the, the Shadowlands expansion. And so the, the, the opportunity to basically tell these stories, to get into uh, the exciting things that are to come. It's something that we're really looking forward to sharing with you, just not today. Today, we're actually going to be looking back. We're gonna be looking at the last 25 years of Warcraft, the last 15 of which are World of Warcraft. We have been preparing for this panel, talking about some of our stories, some of our experiences working. Uh, and it's been fun, but we've realized that we have way more than we have time to share with you today. And so what, uh, what we want to encourage is that if you find us after this talk or just around the convention, stop us and t share with us some of your stories, some of the sound and Warcraft that have been important for you. So let's, uh, let's actually do a quick survey. How many of you play World War? Hands up. Yeah, that's a big number. All right. So hands still up if you play Warcraft. Yep. All right, let's go back a little further. All right, yep. And then all the way back, Warcraft 1. There are some hands up. This is excellent. That person. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, a quarter century of Warcraft audio. Um, let's get into uh, introducing you to some of the people who are on the stage with us today. Uh, so first off, my name is Jay McGuire. I'm a senior producer working on the War World of Warcraft team. I've been at Blizzard since 2005, just a few months after World of Warcraft shipped. Uh, I'm going to be your tour guide today on this nostalgia trip. Uh, and to that end, I'd like you to look to my left, to David Rovin. Ah. Yes, you're looking a little better than your picture. <laughs> and I think you're getting into the spirit of this next expansion. Yeah. Um, David is our sound supervisor on World of Warcraft, which means that he leads a team of sound designers, and they establish the sound of what World of Warcraft is from this point going forward. Next to Dave, we have Brian Farr. Brian is a principal sound designer working on Hearthstone. Brian started in the year 2000. Brian's first game was War Warcraft 3, um, and then he became part of the original sound design team working on World of Warcraft. All of the years that Brian has spent on WoW have helped, uh, has, has helped contribute to a lot of the aesthetic of the game as we know and love, and are a lot of the files that we're actually gonna play for you today are thanks to Brian. That makes me a classic. Uh, <laughs> I think we're all in that category. Uh, next to Brian, we have Glenn Stafford. Yeah. That's right. Glenn is audio hire number one at Blizzard 1993. Glenn has touched, <laughs> Glenn has touched every iteration of Warcraft through the years and is kind of an anchor for us to talk about some of this history and some of these moments throughout. Uh, so, Glenn, why don't we actually go back and start, it's the early 90s, classically changed, cha 
classically trained pianist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How does a musician looking for work find his way into Blizzard? Well, it's a nice story, or maybe a sad story, depending on how you look at it. But uh, so my mom calls me up one day and says, uh, I found an uh, ad for a, a job for a video game composer in the paper. And I don't think you'd ever find a job that way this, <laughs> these days. But uh, so I was like, really, there's a video game composer? That sounds cool. I'm, I love video games. I didn't know anybody in the business. So I, I sent in my demo. And a few weeks later, I got a call from uh, none other than Mike Morheim. He calls me up and uh, asked me to do a temporary uh, uh, trial basis, uh, working on some music conversion. Nice. And what game was that for? That was for PC Lost Vikings. We took Lost Vikings over to PC format. Nice. And he was doing the coding and audio coding for that. And so, I, so Mike was Blizzard's first audio programmer. He was. He, and he did audio programming up through Warcraft 3 even, yeah. yeah. Well, nice. Well, we're always looking for more audio programmers, so, you know, be like Mike. Be like <laughs> Let us back, know. Mike. <laughs> uh, um, well, so how, how big was Blizzard back then? It wasn't even Blizzard. It was tiny. It was, uh, I was employee number 14, I think. Yeah, small office, uh, kind of a common area with a few offices. And at the first week or so, I sat with Mike Morheim in his office working on this music conversion, mm -hmm. He's doing audio coding. And eventually I, I got hired and, and moved out to the common area. And sat next to Joey Ray, our artist slash receptionist. <laughs> you know Joey Ray from Joey Ray's Bar and StarCraft II? There you go. Anybody? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, Brian, let's, uh, let, let's talk about your origin story a little bit. You, uh, you got your start in audio working, recording bands, working at studios. You know, how did you find your way to Blizzard? Yeah, in rock music, actually. <laughs> uh, so I had a part-time job. Uh, everyone knows if you don't make it big in the business, you don't make much money. <laughs> but uh, I had a part-time job, and a guy sat behind me, and I would be talking about games like EverQuest and games I was playing at the time, and I'd be complaining about uh, bugs that I would find in certain games, too. And I think I annoyed him, and he said, you know, you should probably look into being a video game tester. And I said, wait, you get paid to play video games? And uh, it, the light bulb turned on, and I was like, you know, I'm going to take a look at my video game collection when I get home. And I went through everything, and I... Blizzard was on uh, one of the games, it was Diablo. And uh, I looked online and they were looking for quality assurance testers for video games. I applied and got the job. But during my interview, they mentioned they have a sound department. And once again, I was like, I never thought about till that exact moment how cool it would be to do sound effects. So I met Glenn, thanks to Glenn here, uh, two weeks after uh, working at Blizzard at the Queen Mary at an offsite Blizzard party. And uh, I asked Glenn, I said, you know, what could I do to get into the industry? And he said, just give me something, you know, give me something that shows what you could do with sound effects and whatnot. I went home and I used everything I had, guitar stands, kitchen utensils, whatever, to make a battle sequence. Uh, I took it to work, I gave it to the recruiter, and 24 hours later, the recruiter gave it back to me. Denied. Uh, so I was really bummed. Uh, but uh, I didn't give up. Uh, six months later, uh, I was hired full-time in QA, and this time I waited for Glenn. Uh, they used to have, the old building used to have to uh, pass through QA to use the restroom. So I waited patiently, and here came Glenn, and I said, I waited until he went to the bathroom, and he came back, not, Good not going to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, handed him the demo, the same one, just to see, and I asked him, uh, you know, am I headed in the right direction? Could you just listen to this? And he did, and uh, I actually got called back to the sound area, got an interview, and was interned, and I'm going to behold, I got on Warcraft 3, and that's my first job in sound. So that's my, that's that's awesome. my story. <laughs> don't give up. Well, I think uh, it's important to make connections like that, even if, uh, I don't know about Glenn heading to the bathroom, but, you know, it's, it's, it's important to make that connection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, Dave, let's do something a little different. Uh, let, let's actually go back to, I think, the first time you and I worked together. Um, so it was, uh, you had come in, and you were working on Diablo 3. Um, you started at Blizzard in 2011, yep. uh, and, and so you were working on Diablo 3 first, and we were also working on Mr. Pandaria. That was where, where I was at. And at the time, we, we reached a point where it was all hands on deck, so we kind of 
you know, we reached out to the rest of the, the audio, uh, audio team working on all the projects at Blizzard and asked for help to get us kind of over that hill on Mist of Pandaria. And, you know, we needed all sorts of sounds, just the entire gambit, but I, I think the first sound that we actually had you work on was for a creature called the Verming, which, if you're familiar with, uh, with this little guy, he's, you know, he does what most rascally rabbit-like creatures like to do, burrow under the ground, find vegetables, and... There you go. So clearly, the greatest sound in World of Warcraft history. And uh, that's obviously the reason why you're now the sound supervisor, so great work. Uh, <laughs> Worked out well. Yeah. Well, so, you know, we've heard from Glenn and Brian about how they got their start. You're the boss now. Do you have any advice or tips that you'd give to aspiring sound designers? Uh, I think the, the story that Brian told about handing out a demo and getting a no immediately and then sticking to it is a really important lesson. I think perseverance, uh, life is filled with all sorts of moments of, no, this is not what we're looking for. And if it's something you're really after, I think you need to stick with it. On the World of Warcraft team, what I look for when we're hiring is um, not just a love of video games, but a love of the Warcraft universe itself. Uh, I have three members of my team. One of them has a bronze orc. One has a character who is as old as, as my high school age son, who he plays constantly. You'll meet him a little later on. And I have another guy who, as of BFA, had all class characters maxed with no boosts. So these people know the game better than I do it in most ways, and I really lean on them. And you know, in a world where the tools are mature, the game's been live for a long time, uh, having a love for the game really helps you push through some, some roadblocks and things like that. Absolutely. I, I mean, I think there is, a, there is something very important to, to what our jobs are, which is having that reverence for the past and these games and how that helps us actually determine which ways to go in the future. Um, for me, at least, I think one of the things that triggers my nostalgia the hardest is the music. Um, a lot of it is your music, Glenn. Um, so let's, uh, let's actually move on to the next part. Why don't you take us all the way back to Warcraft 1? Um, it was a blank canvas. Uh, what were some of the conversations like? How did we end up with Warcraft 1 music? Well, Warcraft 1 was uh, Blizzard, Blizzard's first game, uh, first uh, PC game, sorry. Uh, first strategy game, um, and, and sorry, it was the first Blizzard game under the new title uh, of our company. And we wanted something different than a lot of games out there. The hardware was fairly limited on what you could do with, uh, with music on a PC, but we wanted a heavy classical soundtrack, and Alan Adham even talked about having a uh, something along the lines of Holst the Planets. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a bit of a challenge with the hardware. Um, we were also working on other games, busy with that, uh, Super Nintendo titles in the works, and I was too busy to write the music for Warcraft 1. A lot of people don't know I didn't do that. We hired, uh, Mike Morheim went out and hired a guy named uh, Gregory Alper, who did a fantastic job at these MIDI versions of uh, classical music, and I have some samples of that over here, as well as uh, a special appearance of sorts. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I'm going to step up here so I can reach it. Well, while you're getting that ready, how about we, uh, how about we give the sound system a little bit of a test? Yeah, it's super working. Your sound card works perfectly. Uh, <laughs> I understood that reference. All right. <laughs> and we're going to skip over huge swaths of uh, Warcraft history, but we're going to give you a few snippets here. Um, starting out with the... Let's, hear the most basic form of uh, Warcraft 1 music on an FM synthesis card uh, where you might get eight notes, eight note polyphony, eight notes at a time, uh, something like that, playback. Uh, so that would sound something like this. And the waves of nostalgia wash over the crowd. There's something familiar about that. That's not the only place that. Oh, this, yeah, it's a, you, you probably heard this one from Warcraft 2. Yeah. It made its way as an Easter egg track and has uh, Medieval Man Easter egg. There he is, Medieval Man. Glenn, you are Medieval Man. 
So that's the FM uh, synthesis version. So if you want a little bit higher quality than that, actually quite a bit, uh, you would jump up to what's called General MIDI. Um, and we have our, our special guest appearance is a sound canvas, which is a General MIDI sound module, uh, synthesizer module. And this just happens to be, his name keeps coming up today, Mike Morheim's Sound Canvas, everybody, yay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the only one in the world because it was Mike's and it was used to create uh, the Warcraft 1, Warcraft 2 music. He brought it in, I layered it. I had another Sound Canvas uh, similar to this and the two layered together made nice sounds. Um, anyway, uh, this is the MIDI version, uh, the, the general MIDI version of that, playing back live MIDI out of the iPad into the sound canvas. And MIDI is kind of cool. You can jump around a little bit more, more forgiving. jump around and loop and do things in the game that you can't do with digital audio, um, but it, it did have its limitations. That so, would sound a little bit better than the FM synth version, though. So it, when you've described uh, described MIDI and kind of what we're seeing on your, your iPad, like we've got a, actually an example to show. How, uh, how yeah, it would be like on a, uh, you can't really see this, but on the screen, yeah, like a piano roll um, representation of MIDI. It's just note information, what note, how long the note is, how hard to play the note, and uh, things like that. And that's just sending the data to the sound module, which, which is playing it back. Um, and so that's how music worked in the games back then. You didn't have uh, rendered audio files. There was no, no, not enough bandwidth for streaming. So. Right. Well, so, so eventually you had, uh, you had the opportunity to write your own music. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what some of your goals were as you were going into, into that? Sure, yes. Um, so for my, my part in Warcraft music was um, wanting to keep the tradition going and I really wanted to bring some more contemporary um, rock and pop kind of sensibilities to it, even though it was still rooted in you know, classical uh, format. Uh, it's, you know, it was game music. It was meant to be energetic and fun and kind of build over time along with the, the units building up, mm. things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I have some samples of, of some music I brought um, as well for that. You know. Cool, let's, uh, let's move into some of the samples. Yeah, so actually, let's just do a fun little guessing game here. <laughs> so, if I played this sound, anybody recognize that? It's kind of innocuous. Kind of sounds like my clock. All right, what if I, oops, what if I put that with some percussion? Anybody guess that, name that tune? <laughs> All right, let me give you a clue that somebody's I'm probably going to get out there in the audience. Where is it? Here we go. Somebody's got to recognize that. That guy. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> One guy. All right, well, if we put it all together, and again, playing back live off of Morheim Sound Canvas, here's, you guessed it, Warcraft 2, Human 1. The most creative song title ever. Everybody, dun dun dun. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, oops, I'm going to undo that change. I'm going to show you uh, a, a, the next clip is the same tune, but it was a. Uh, we were thankful. Uh, I was thankful enough to be able to do not only all the MIDI versions for Warcraft 2. But uh, at the last minute, we decided to record it all and put it as Redbook audio. So um, game geeks still come out there and tell me, "Oh, it was cool. You could put the Red, you could put the Warcraft 2 uh, in your CD player and play back the the music that way." So that sounded like this, pretty similar, but um, 
digital audio this time. human music uh, over over time early early days all right well I, uh, I saw some heads bobbing to that and uh, I think there's some people in here that like me would just like to spend the whole time listening to the music but we've got a lot to cover uh, so why don't you why don't you bring us home share us a few other pieces that uh, that we've seen kind of carry through the Warcraft franchise right so the one you just heard, um, and I think kind of all the Warcraft 2 music made its way into later games in some fashion. Um, but in particular, there's one on the Horde side, to give the Horde some, some props. Uh, early Orc music had some rhythms and groove to it that you might not see today. Um, here's an example of Warcraft 2 Orc music. Last bit, I'm gonna, well, yeah, that one made its way into Warcraft 3, I think even early WoW. Um, there's another uh, quick example of some human music from Warcraft 3. The opening bit um, was also quoted in Heroes of the Storm, um, a little bit differently after the intro, but uh, the original from Warcraft 2's opening sounded like this. A lot of people uh, recognize that riff. And I'm going to take you to the next one, which is a up to all the way up to modern day with full live orchestra, live choir, a kitchen sink. And that sounded like this. I'm, uh, I'm not sure you went big enough. I could have added the rock band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some music geeks out there are probably going, oh, yeah, big deal. He's playing MIDI back into my Morheim sound canvas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's actually it's, it's really cool to see. You know, we're talking about how the game has evolved. In 25 years, we're seeing all the way back to MIDI up to hearing live orchestra, live choir. And it's even mirrored in the fact that you have the sound canvas and you're controlling it with the tablet. It's the... Yeah, a small little tablet, the same original MIDI files. I didn't have to alter them at all, imported them in. And that tablet is hundreds of times more powerful than any computer we had back then. Uh, so, <laughs> 100 times limit, smaller than a lot of us. <laughs> some, some to be said about working in, within those small limitations, though. It's kind of, uh, it lets you flow with the creativity and. Certainly. Oh, is, are there ways that you would approach MIDI differently than how you, uh, how you handle music today? Uh, you'd put, I think, more notes. Uh, <laughs> there was, the, the music took more of a uh, prominent role. I think mm -hmm. back then there wasn't streaming ambience and not a lot of other sounds, just the unit sounds. Um, and the MIDI tends to sound better as uh, playing more notes quicker, uh, not sustaining the notes. You don't have the lush, long samples that you have today. So. Right. Well, Brian, you've, you've even mentioned that, you know, we're talking about MIDI and how it applies to music, but you've mentioned that you've used this in the past for, for ambience as well, right? 
Yeah, when I first started in Warcraft 3, we actually used MIDI to control what we call a DLS instrument, a very small bank of sounds. Uh, it would have like little loops of wind loops and uh, birds. And then we would take that and play the, the little, the MIDI to control that. Cause back then it was really hard to compress a file down really small without uh, being a massive download size on your, or a massive, or take up a lot of space on your hard drive. Yeah, so that let us have ambience in War 3, otherwise we wouldn't have. No. Yep. <laughs> well, so, Glenn, you've, uh, you know, we've talked about the music. You're a full-time composer now, uh, but that's not, that hasn't always been the case. Uh, in fact, for most of your time at Blizzard, you've also been a sound designer. Um, you know, Brian, uh, you started in 2000, uh, 2003 on, on World of Warcraft, uh, and a lot of the team at the time, uh, you know, you've mentioned had a musical background. Uh, and Dave, even you have a, a music background. You've composed for games in the past. Uh, I think you started your sound career in 1994, uh, joining Blizzard in 2011, but you've done a lot of music work as well as sound design. And yes, yes. I don't think that's a requirement per se, but it's certainly something that's been common in a lot of the sound designers that work in World of Warcraft. Uh, how do you think that's actually affected the sound that, that we hear today? It's really interesting. Everybody has a different interpretation of what drives them and gives them inspiration on making sound effects. Uh, but I'm going to set the pace. Uh, in 2003, when I did start on uh, World of Warcraft, we really started building out what the spells were going to sound like. Uh, I remember being in this meeting. It was the first big kickoff for the visuals that you see. Oh, how many players do we have that are doing, playing Classic right now out there? Yeah. Okay, quite a few. Good number. So before it was called Classic, and it was just World of Warcraft, uh, we, for the first time, were starting to figure out how we were going to get sound on all these spells. And uh, what really struck a chord with me, no pun intended, was uh, the fact that every color on every spell effect had such meaning and depth. So as a sound designer, my ear always kind of goes, goes towards what, what kind of element, a tonal element, can I tell the player that this belongs to this spell effect, such as like a holy spell. Uh, it's got the gold and it's got the, the shimmering uh, colors and the healing properties to it. And it's about getting that right, what I would say, sound chord or uh, tonal element. So I'm gonna play a video and you're, if you've been playing classic or you play the original, you would understand hopefully how this all plays out. So here we, here we go. So we're listening for the different tonal elements with each tonal one Tonal elements, yes. took a lot of trial and error to get to that level. Uh, the th spells back then were very simplistic in their own way, uh, and the sound I felt, uh, it was really important that we had an element on each of these that you could just know what was happening, not just on screen, but off screen. Uh, we are one of the only disciplines in development that can tell you information of what's happening behind you when you can't see any visuals or text notifying you what's going on. So once we got that just right, it's what I've been calling uh, as going back to classic now, and we can actually hear these again in context, the base coat of sound. Like we've used these elements, bringing them forward into what you hear in the current World of Warcraft or even Hearthstone that I'm working on, the team. We all work really hard to try to get that to make sense and identify as you are you, the player, to identify what these elements are. And it goes all the way back to 2003. So, yeah. Uh, excellent. So, moving us forward. Um, does anyone have an idea what this sound is? It just keeps going. <laughs> does anyone see any wisps? All right. <laughs> you recognize the horn of Cenarius from the Warcraft 3 cinematic? Uh, excellent. This is a... As we were sitting around telling some stories, you know, it was hard for us to find some of these specific uh, elements and moments to share with you. And this one kind of stood out as fun because, you know, I, I'm going to retell your story, Glenn. I, I, you know, as you had gone out into the forest, 
uh, just outside of Irvine to the tallest tree and taken a giant branch and carved this amazing wooden instrument that they actually modeled the in-game version on. I mean, you can see it, and that's, that's how this happened, right? Like, that's fairly accurate. 100%. Uh, minus the part about the carving and the wood. And... <laughs> the the so forest outside of Irvine? The, yeah. <laughs> the all-too-ugly truth is that the horn do not look so pretty. It was um, some industrial foam tubing from the hardware store with was kind of thick, dense foaming with, uh, it, was, it had a plastic coating on it. Um, I tried various lengths of it and various ways of having a bell on the end. Ultimately, uh, I found the right length and had it coming just into a, a metal pot to give it some resonance. Um, so, yeah, the goal for that horn was, it, you know, it had to be big and magical and more, you know, otherworldly, uh, as well as, you know, sound like it's coming from that guy. Why would you use foam instead of... Oh, like, well, yeah, the, the, the metal or the plastic, the hard stuff wasn't working. It had to be more kind of soft and absorb the sound and then ring out at the end. Um, so it just, it wasn't working to use anything with the hard surface. And your I, years of playing the piano really prepared you for the... Yes, my lips were not prepared. <laughs> but I practiced and practiced. I think I had to come back, you know, the next day for my lips to recover. And I finally got a good take of me, like, starting low and, and going up high. And then I did some more sustaining notes and some different notes with it. Uh, but I should have hired a, a brass player. <laughs> anyway. It was fun. Well, I think it turned out okay. Well, it, it's funny. You and I actually went earlier this week. We decided to go spelunking into the Foley Room, which entered your own risk. And uh, we were looking to see if we could find this prop. And I, I don't think the, the foam uh, lasted the, the, the test of time. But uh, No, uh, but my, my <laughs> wife actually uh, found something. That, and she set it aside for me with not knowing anything about this, she's like, oh, he's, he's going to use that one day. The <laughs> long cardboard tube, and that almost makes the same sound, but I, I couldn't practice enough to play that today, so <laughs> I left that at home. Well, I, I think we're, we're, we're kind of going down this line of the, the musical aspect of sound design in a way, you're turning anything into a musical instrument, uh, which Aaron is going to show us later. Um, but through, yeah. why don't we actually check the horn out in context, how it actually plays with the music and the other sound effects? Wisp sounds. We know who made those too, right? That was me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like <it's> swishy sounds. <laughs> All right, so part of what we're here to talk about today is the power of nostalgia. I will now demonstrate the Doppler effect. Doppler! <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> so dialogue is something that when we're, uh, when we're looking back at things, it's, uh, it's often... In early games, you know, you're looking for basically the closest and best option, and so uh, Warcraft is no example, and as we were going through some of the files, we found a whole lot of things that we could not share with you today, but there were some <laughs> that we could, and so, uh, you know, any guesses on who that voice, did it sound familiar? There's a trend here, if you haven't noticed. Glenn. <laughs> and this is also Glenn. Uh, is it? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn is a, Glenn's voice is actually, you've, in most of our games, StarCraft, the SCV is... Uh, it's great. Uh, I'm, I'm actually partial to the, uh, the mortar team, which is you and Chris Metzen, uh, the, the dynamic duo. <laughs> um, we also have a few other people. Let's, uh, let's actually see if you can tell who, who this is. <coughs> well, I know what character that is, but Brian? Yeah, you're not going to believe this. That's Mike Morheim. Mike Morheim. Yeah, his <laughs> hind voice can do that. It was just a little bit of pitching. He came in and I'm like, of course, please. You're the president. When Mike says he wants to do an order, no, he, just... kicked, he kicked butt on it. it it's great. It's... <laughs> All right, so we got, we got one more to share. This one's a little different because this is actually, this wasn't uh, uh, intended to be a character as we were recording it. This is someone actually warming up. So give this a listen. 
Sounds familiar. No! They already guessed it. No! I'm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. he, he almost said it right there. I am thrall. So, like his warm-up mantra. I guess, too. Yeah. yeah, Metzen basically, uh, to get into Thrall, his, to get in that character, he would tear his voice up. So I happened to be recording that session, and I was like, I hit record. I was like, this, I don't know where I'm going to use this, but eventually it found its way into Burning Crusade in uh, the Blood Furnace. So uh, it was perfect for the pain of the fellow orcs being transformed. <laughs> Don't pull the trash. <laughs> Brian, the patrol is coming. You should move. <laughs> yeah, it works so good. <laughs> I'm so happy with that one. Uh, Torture. Orcs. Chris getting turned into a fell arc there, yeah. Yeah, when he would come out of it. When he would come out of a session from that, he would his voice would be completely done. So he worked really hard to get into that thrall character. Well, that is definitely something that would not advise to try at home. I think, you know, we I think all of us have been on that side of the mic, and it's a lot of fun. And I, I think that humor and personality actually comes through, especially in some of the earlier games. But you know, as the game has been evolving, you know, we have more dialogue in the story, and the the. The, as things have evolved, we've really started to lean more on actors. And uh, today, we've actually been really fortunate with the, the talent that we can that we lean on, the the, the opportunity f to tell these uh, deeper stories and more character. And um, yeah, it's 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 been amazing. Um, so I want to move us on. We're going to play a couple more samples here. So. <laughs> Do I have your attention? All right. Power of nostalgia. All right, so we're going to uh, we're going to talk about there's 15 years of sound in World of Warcraft that you've been hearing through repetition and over, and memories have been as tied to these times and space. You you started to have meaning associated with it, which is honestly one of the key jobs of sound to help communicate gameplay cues. So while yes, having these uh, boundaries kind of defined for us that whenever we're trying to evolve can be tricky. If you go outside of these lines, then it can feel wrong. Uh, it ultimately, it actually works in our favor. It's a strong base that we can build on and explore. And so um, let's actually go and see, are, are you ready for a few more examples? All right. You can tell where I'm going with this, all right. <laughs> Brian, I said, are you ready? Let's do it. All no, right, no. Brian's ready, okay. I was um, ready. So, Games are uh, often better if you play with friends, so what how about... What do you want? Ready for action. Let's bring these guys along. Um, well, at least some friends. <laughs> Not sure about that guy. Uh, well, I, I think we're ready to go, so let's, uh, let's, let's see what, what we can What do you find. need? Zog, zog. All right, they're ready. Uh-oh. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think... Every time I hear that sound, I have a physical reaction to it. Does anybody else like Fell Reaver? Yeah, there we go. Uh, um, let's, uh, let's not mess around with this guy. Let's take care of him quick. Yeah. And again, a voice that sounds familiar, Glenn. <laughs> now, this is a sound that Glenn made back in Warcraft 3, and it's just it's too iconic. We've brought it forward into WoW, and every time the trouble's there, Glenn yells at us. So... I just move imagine on, what on. an orc would do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I, Brian, let's go back to the Fell Reaver. What, how did you make that sound? So the Fell Reaver, it was really interesting. It was, I had to go look at this session. Uh, Jay said, how did you make that? I had to go open up the session. It had been that long, and I could not remember. And it turned out it was a bunch of old door, rusty doors being opened, the hinges being pulled, and it just kind of squeaking and screeching and making all these weird sounds. That mixed with a bear. Yeah. So, yeah, everything that you have in your garage? Bear was in the bathroom. The bear. Okay. Obviously, obviously. Yeah, that's how you get those good grunts. It works really good. All right, well, I think, uh, I think we, we distracted the Fell River enough. We can send him away. Good thing. How do they sneak up on you? How does that thing sneak up? I don't know. Uh, 
Well, so I suspect... Here you die. Yeah, I suspect that uh, most of you who raised your hand at the beginning um, could probably have told me what those sounds were, even without the visuals that popped up. So if that's the case, good on you. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, you know, we... As with the dialogue, the game has evolved over time, and there's a, it continues to grow and expand, and we use this library. We incorpor incorporate it into sound palettes that we've expanded through the years. As schools of magic have, have become more detailed and more intricate, we've had to expand on that language, and we still have that base, those, those precasts that Brian played. We still, we still work within those, within those bounds. And, Brian, you work on Hearthstone now, and you even take that forward into other games. So this language is carried forward into everything that says Warcraft on it. Um, I was going to say, too, that the Hearthstone team is amazing. Uh, the sound designers are there incredible. Uh, Andy and John right now working with me over there. So props to them. Jonas, I just want to throw that out. Yeah. <laughs> Hearth team. Hearthstone sounds amazing. Um, Dave, I want, to, I want to shift to you. You have been at the helm of, uh, of World of Warcraft since Battle for Azeroth. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what your experience has been adding to the, the WoW sound? Well, the core of my job is to take the concepts of the designers and the artists and bring them to life using sound. And one of the great advantages of working on this particular game is that um, the world of Azeroth is really well understood. And as an example of that, there's a chart that we use. It's the cosmology chart, and I actually have a copy of this up on my desktop. Um, and it really is sort of a compass for us working on all of the schools of magic, uh, the base coat that, um, that Brian developed in the early 2000s fits right into this, and we, we to this day still use it. So you can see light opposes dark, and uh, order dis uh, opposes disorder, and uh, life and death. Um, and everything in between represents everything uh, both in magic and in sound uh, in the world of Warcraft. And, and it's a guiding light for us as we develop stuff. So as an example, we're going to play um, a sound that has a precast from the Brian's era with a uh, cast sound from our era. And while we have maybe higher fidelity and some stereo imaging and a couple extra layers, it's still pr pretty much set in the same nature magic universe. So let's play that file. So that's a 2003 era sound with a 2017 era sound. So sometimes we actually can control that. So like in the case of the, the class spells, we understand exactly what's going to happen when you press the button. But a lot of times in a game like World of Warcraft, we can't actually tell how you're going to encounter sound. And so a lot of what we have to do is, is build on this common language so that wherever you're finding something, you understand what it is. And there may be a sound that was made in 2003 or even earlier that's associated with Warcraft 3 or something along those lines, along with a sound that we've created for that moment in time. Um, so let's, uh, Dave, let's, let's talk about the future. Um, tell us, what does the future hold? Tell us, Dave. <laughs> well, I come from this job, I come at this job from a technological point of view. Uh, I'm a, I have a CS background, and a big part of my job is just uh, giving my team better and better tools uh, and higher fidelities, that sort of thing to work on. Um, another thing that I've been working on, and you've been instrumental in this as well, is um, telling stories with a collaboration between music and sound effects. My favorite soundscapes in movies and TV and games is when the lines between sound effects and music get blurred. And we're about to hear an example of, of, that, of just that. Absolutely. I, I mean, this is something that, that appears all through World of Warcraft and these opportunities for, for like the ambience and the music to work hand in hand and kind of tell that same story. And, you know, the collaboration between these departments is something that we, that, that we strive to find. And what's interesting is that in the upcoming content, both with what you're going to see is from Visions of Nzoth, um, and it's going to tie into the next portion that we're going to actually see. Um, but we also see this coming forward for, with, uh, with Shadowlands as well. There's a lot of opportunity yes. for us to blur those lines. So as we set up for our next section here, enjoy this video.
All right, so that was an example of the music that's actually gonna play in Visions of N'Zoth. Um, this is, there's going to be more, but what you can hear here is some of the more ambient stuff. So we really want to try and blur those lines in terms of what feels ambient and what feels like music. And Visions of N'Zoth is a perfect place to get into your head. Um, speaking of, uh, next up we're gonna have Aaron Kraft. Um, Aaron is uh, also known to his D&D group as Captain Darby O'Shea, who uh, you can see here. I don't know if he's coming out in character or not. Yeah. Um, but Aaron and I met back in 2012 at a GDC. He actually, he was at a demo derby for sound design, and he really wowed us with a Warcraft-themed Unreal map. He had built all of the, the assets that went into it. He had done the implementation, all of the sound design, and it really featured a an incredible up-and-coming sound designer, which you're going to see shortly. Um, Aaron is just one of the biggest Warcraft fans that I've personally ever met. I mean, take a look at his office. I kind of want to live in this space. Um, he is a dwarf paladin through and through. If you walk into this office at all times, it's at least 10 degrees hotter than everywhere else on the Blizzard campus. Um, and so with that, uh, Aaron, why don't you come out and show him what you can do? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Ahoy! Uh, all right, thanks for that intro, Sir Jay. Whew. All right, I'm extremely excited to be here. Uh, I've been playing WoW since day one, so as you guys can imagine, you're in those same seats that I sat in. I'm extremely excited to be able to help build this stuff now. But enough of that. Let's get to some fun stuff. So today we're going to be going over the next update uh, Visions of Nazoth. We're going to go through some creature and magic sound design. We're going to start off with some creatures. So let's bring in our uh, subjects here. We have big tentacle face, small tentacle face, really scientific names here. Tentacles going down, tentacles going up, mostly, and a room full of tentacles. Clearly we're working on squirrels today. All right, uh, so who remembers Sean Minot's awesome slime demo from last year? Yeah, that was super awesome. So that, that stuff would be super perfect for these tentacle guys, uh, but we're gonna need to do something a bit different. So instead of using a can to inject air into slime, we're going to use this PVC pipe and while blowing, do our best monster impression into the slime. This is probably the last time you'll hear my voice. I'm about to lose it. You guys ready? I'm a little lightheaded right now. Okay, so uh, yeah, as you guys can see, it's super fun. Uh, you can do that for hours if you don't pass out. Uh, but what the coolest part of this process is, is that everybody has their own monster voices that they do. I know you guys do them in the car when somebody like honks or something, probably, maybe. Anyways, uh, to uh, demonstrate that, Sir Brian, would you come back to the stage and help us out? We got some inspiration for you. This is a super big tentacle face guy. Don't inhale. Why not? <laughs> not as easy as it All right, was. let's hear it for Sir Brian. Thank you. <clears throat> Whew. All right, cool. So uh, from there, we took the best parts, manipulated a bunch, and here's just a couple of uh, spots they ended up in game. All right, one more. Oh, 
The snail is not an old god, but it was cool, so I had to put it in there. Thank you for your sacrifice, Mr. Snail. All right, so we're going to move on to some magic. Who likes magic? Me too. It's one of my favorite things to, to work on. Uh, but what's different about magic is that it really brings a lot of abstract problem solving to the board. So who better to help uh, us address this? Ooh, there it goes, see? Uh, who, who better to help address this than uh, uh, Sir uh, Archmage himself, Cadgar? We went to him and we said, Mr. Cadgar, would you please help us uh, summon an ancient artifact that might help us uh, discover this sort of wisdom? And he said, knowledge is power and summoned a whiteboard. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> so on this whiteboard, uh, what we do is we write all sorts of things like uh, uh, concepts, themes, lore, emotions, uh, really anything that comes to inspiration. Uh, the important part of this process, though, is that we don't put a lot of rules on ourselves, so it's just creative, and uh, it's also a communal sort of uh, development together, so we can brew our ideas and all that good stuff. Uh, so th another reason why this exercise is helpful is that later on, if we need some more inspiration, we can come back to it. Or if we're getting a little too crazy, these are our rails to help guide us. So <clears throat> uh, do you guys remember earlier, Brian and Dave, they mentioned how one of the most important things when designing sounds for magic is finding that identifiable tonal signature? Cool. So looking at this whiteboard, we're sitting there thinking, how do we distill all of this stuff into a sound? Enter the trash can. <clears throat> it's another artifact. <clears throat> so originally I made this thing for uh, some Mechagon beasts. I'll give you that quick tour here. Just your regular old trash can from your local hardware store. 30 bucks if you're wondering. And inside you have uh, two copper wires, one big and one small, thick, thin, whatever. And uh, they're crossed over so you can play one at a time or two at a time. And uh, also it enables you to kind of do a circular motion from the thick to the thin without having to stop the sound. Now to make it a little bit more expressive, up here, uh, I just attached on a spare door hinge I happen to have and uh, some spare wood that lets you tighten and loosen the wires um, to make it a little bit more expressive. Here, I'll just play the thing for you. <clears throat> High class instrument. <laughs> That's a beautiful piece I've been working on all week. Uh, Glenn, I'm available if you're interested. All right, so uh, the more I messed around with this thing, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, there's more to tell you. So anyways, uh, the uh, prop design, I based it off of a concept that uh, Peter Steinbach, one of our senior voiceover designers, uh, taught me, which was if you're making a prop intended to kind of mimic voices, incorporate all of that physical anatomy into the prop design. So you have like your, your skull is kind of your resonating chamber. That would be the equivalent of the, the, uh, the can here. And then inside are the copper wires, like your vocal cords. And as your vocal cords go higher and lower, that's the uh, bendy thing on the side. So anyways, uh, the more I messed around with this thing, the more I was like, you know, this actually does a pretty good job of emoting some of the stuff that's on our whiteboard. So I locked myself in my office for a few hours, channeled my best old god into the trash can, and uh, here's just a small bit of what I got. All right. Sounds like a trash can, huh? All right, but there's more. So uh, 
doing this right off the bat, I was like, you know, this feels like it's going to naturally land in sort of an ambience, uh, ambience vibe. So I added some uh, reverb and motion effects to it. Here we go. But if this is gonna be an ambience for, say, uh, uh, Nyalotha, Nyalotha is not some tiny puny city, it is a grand empire home of an old god, so let's make it bigger. Thank you. And one last, uh, one last example, and this is just to show you how different it can sound with some completely different effects and some less aggressive playing. Cool, so thank you. So ambiences are looking pretty good, uh, but if we're gonna make a full suite of magic sounds out of this, we're gonna need to bring in some additional elements. So I went to Sir Dave and I said, Sir Dave, can you help me out with this? And he gave me some bowed cactus. All right, now to help sell the uh, fantasy of Nizoth trying to claws influence into your mind, I uh, added a little bit of thickness and motion to it. And I went back to Dave and he gave me some screams. I had no idea he could get that high. And uh, took those and kind of bent it into a smoky voices in the wind sort of thing. So this concept of madness magic that we're exploring, uh, this is telling the story of how Nazoth has the tentacles in everything. So in a way, uh, this isn't your typical magic of arcane or uh, frost. This is kind of more of a living magic. So I thought, well, how do we tell that story? Let's try just using his voice to see what we got. This is Darren DePaul. Cool. All right, took that and formed it into a, a old god soup, I call it. Cool. So we have a lot of interesting textures, but we're missing that all important uh, identifiable tonal sound. So I went back to the trash can, and this time I kind of focused in on this sort of insect vibe I was hearing, uh, reminding me in some ways of like the insectoid races from the Black Empire and all that good old god lore. Uh, so I explored that a bit. See if you guys can hear it. All right, so at, the, at this point in the process, Nazoth was successfully reaching through the computer monitor into my own mind. You'll hear why. Yeah. It's true. I just showed a, a buddy of mine in the hallway that last one, and he looked at me like I was crazy, which at that point was probably very true. All right, so... I uh, took all that and did some more weird stuff to it with whooshes and layers, and here's some final results.
cool. Thank you. So uh, just one last point. It sounds corny, but I truly believe it, that the real magic here is not one weirdo in his office making a bunch of weird things. Uh, it's the, all of the team uh, collaboration that goes into this. There's so many hours of hallway conversations and just uh, idea searching uh, that takes these, this sort of thing into way bigger territory than I ever could have on my own. So thank you, team. Sir Jay, that's all I got. So from all of the panelists, um, from Aaron's Trash Can, Mike Morheim Sound Canvas, we want to say thank you for coming out, spending your uh, morning with us here. Uh, as well, there are more than 50 men and women working in uh, audio at Blizzard, and we really appreciate uh, your energy and everything that, uh, that you give us. So uh, if you want to chat with us, we're actually going to be over here in the meet and greet area uh, sh shortly. Um, we'd love to say hello and hear from you about what uh, sound moments that, that you love from your time in Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, BlizzCon.